What's up, blockchain gang? This is Danny Draghi, and today we're going to answer the question, should you play Mir 4 in 2022? To answer that question first, we need to break down exactly what Mir 4 is for anyone who has never heard of it before now. Mir 4 is a 3D MMORPG created by one of South Korea's largest video game companies called We Made. It was released globally last year on August 26th and has remained one of the top 15 most played games on Steam for more than 7 months. It is free to play and earn, features open world PvP, and is available in over 100 in 70 different countries. Don't just take my word for it, let's take a gander at some of the positive reviews on Steam. Steam user Do Not Panic Uwu with nearly 600 hours played says, 220 hours in, and I enjoy this game a lot. Yes there are threats of getting PvP killed, but I've been able to defend myself a few times. While Steam user Crazer with over 1000 hours played says, The Earth is 4.6 billion years old and we managed to exist at the same time as this masterpiece. And Steam user Ko Lee Ra with about 2,500 hours played says simply, Good game. A man of few words. I like that. Meanwhile, Oyag with 1,600 hours played says, Very addictive game. I have compromised my job over this game. Now, I am jobless and just playing this game over and over again. I can't stop playing it. Download it. Finally, user The Cold Revolution with 2,750 hours played says, Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and desert you. While Steam user Denison replied with, you complete me. So if anyone out there had any doubts about how great of a game Mir 4 is, we can put those to rest. And if anyone out there has any job openings for Oyag, it would be great if you could help a brother out. If you want to try Mir 4, you can right now at one of the links in the description on your desired platform. And if you have already tried it, I'd love to know what you think about it in the comments below. There are many systems and mechanics at work in Mir 4 that fascinate me as a game designer, but I realize that not all players will have this unique perspective, so I'll try to only go over my favorite gameplay mechanics and leave all of the nerdy design stuff for another day. The first thing I want to point out is the main story quest. It is entirely voice acted in Korean with localized subtitles. The translations never interfered with my ability to understand what was going on, and while I don't actually speak the language myself, it definitely sounds Korean-ishy to me from my limited experience with the Squid Games, All of Us Are Dead, and the Korean restaurant down the road. I would much rather have subtitles and great voice acting than have the game ruined by sub-quality voice actors in order to cover as many different languages as possible. In addition to the voice acting, the sound effects and background music is great and that is important in a game you may spend thousands of hours in. I am not that big on graphics, but if you're looking at the same character models and landscapes for that long, it doesn't hurt if they're beautiful. I would like you to take just a moment to appreciate all of the detail that went into the animations and expressions of these spirit pets in order to give each one a distinct personality that goes along with the powers they possess. <laughs> The story by itself is not nearly as amazing as the mystery quests that become available as you progress through the game. These mystery quests are interwoven with the main story quest in order to shine more light on the characters involved in their individual motives. It is as if the main story of the game is the bad ending, and only after solving countless mysteries throughout the world are you able to fill in the missing pieces and get the true ending of the whole story after interrogating numerous NPCs. Sorry, no spoilers here, you'll just have to play it to find out. I would like to go back in time now and tell you a little bit about my personal life. Nearly 20 years ago, I spent a few years in a competitive MMORPG as part of a top 50 guild in PvP. I soon realized that I would never have enough time to spend playing a game like that again. That is because it would often require playing for 12 to 20 hours a day almost non-stop. Not only is this an unhealthy lifestyle, but it also leaves very little time for school, 
a job, or relationships outside of the game. I always thought that if I couldn't compete with the best, it would be a waste of my time so I stayed away from traditional MMORPGs. However, Mirror 4 gives players enough to do within the game if they really want to play all day, but it doesn't punish you for being unable to do so. That is because of the AFK grinding system, or autopilot, that keeps your character progressing even if you're not able to play the game at the time. I have tried other games that used an AFK combat system and the problem with those games is that their AFK system was just as efficient as playing the game yourself. This made playing the game totally pointless. But Mirror 4 strikes an excellent balance between granting you progress while AFK, but also allowing you to gain faster progress when you take control of the character yourself. Due to this mechanic, I can step away from the game at nearly any time without losing much, so the game is not punishing me for having a life alongside enjoying it. The open world PvP really makes the world come to life when you know that at any time, another Another player could be hunting you down and attempting to kill you. This means that all of your actions will have consequences in the game and renders an advantage to players who are good at forming strong friendships. For example, in the Secret Peak Zone I could summon a boss and defeat it which would grant me 3-5 to five treasure chests worth of loot. This is a very greedy way of playing though because a group of people could come by at any time and kill me, kill my boss, and steal my booty. On the other hand, I could have brought a team full of allies which would make killing the boss much safer. But I would have had to split up the treasure. This decision is yours to make. Do you play it safe for a guaranteed but small reward or do you risk it for the biscuit? If someone does kill you, you gain the ability to track them down for the next 30 minutes to exact your revenge. This is probably the most excitement I've ever felt in a video game. It doesn't matter if you're hunting someone or being hunted, you're in for a heart pounding experience. Grab help from your allies if the opponent is too strong or place a bounty on their head and they'll think twice about attacking you again. Mirror 4 allows you to advance while you're AFK, but what if you want to play while you're on the go? Since it is cross-platform, you can sign in from your phone or tablet and continue your journey from wherever you are. This allows access to potentially billions of players around the world who do not own a personal computer. You will find links in the description to the Steam download, official client, Google Play Store, Apple Store, or APK giving you the most ways to play. Since the game is global and is not region locked, you can play on any server around the world with friends or family. You can transfer your character to a different server or even a different region if need be, and the game has voice chat support for large parties as well as a native translator for in-game text chat. There are five different classes to choose from that are the Warrior, Taoist, Sorcerer, Lancer, and Arbalist each with its own unique playstyle. Each class has 12 different abilities as well as an ultimate ability, all of which evolve as your character progresses. For example, my favorite skill is Tai Chi. Not only does it make me look like Neo from The Matrix, but it also hits up to 8 enemies in a large circle around me, up to 6 times. I'm immune to crowd control such as knockdowns and stuns while casting, and it knocks down enemies hit by the final blow. Once the ability reaches level 5, it not only does more damage, but it increases my evasion for 30 seconds and greatly increases it for 5 seconds, making me very difficult to hit. It amplifies all skill damage to the targets and increases the amount of healing my whole party receives. But wait! There's more. At level 8, it does even more damage and grants more evasion, damage amplification and heals, but it also can break the target's weapon, which lowers their attack, accuracy, and evasion for 5 minutes, but only if you use your abilities in the correct order. This is just an example of how 1 out of 65 different abilities change and enhance the playstyle of each class dramatically. The farther you get into the game, the higher the skill cap of each class becomes, taking PvP to another level for players that are familiar familiar with all abilities from each class and their effects. As you're playing the game of Mirror 4, you're also earning resources that can be converted into real world currencies. Players that acquire Dark Steel from within the game can use it to make their character stronger in many different ways, or they can smelt it into Draco, which can be exchanged into any other cryptocurrency, or even cash to be deposited into your bank account. This play and earn mechanic, along with being completely free to play, global, and cross-platform make Mirror 4 one of the most accessible 
mobile games in the world. Are you really the best in the world or are you simply the best in the world among those who can afford to compete? Only now will we find out the real answer. Let me explain. Previously, video games were purchased, imported, or pirated in order to be enjoyed. Many also required ongoing subscription fees and a personal computer or video game console. This excluded the majority of the world from enjoying some of the same video games that shaped my childhood, and that shit makes me a sad panda. It's like finding out one of your best friends has never seen your favorite movie, and I will not tolerate this brand of injustice. The free-to-play model changed all of this and allowed people who could not afford computers or could not own consoles to still play popular games with their friends, and this destroyed a huge barrier of entry for billions of would-be gamers. In the same manner, play and earn games have made it even more affordable to play video games since players are able to earn from their entertainment. This can even put pressure on wage and safety standards when these earnings rival the minimum wages of developing countries. I predict it will also be responsible for educating an entire generation on advanced concepts in finance, such as compounded interest, trading in a real-world ecosystem, and other financial derivatives such as the ones offered by the WeMix wallet. The biggest factor in play to earn for me, since I could afford to play the games before, is that it creates an entirely new set of choices to make at every turn that was previously never present. Before, if a game was free or not, you could usually spend more on expansions, collector's editions, cosmetics, or in-game advantages, such as experience boost, premium passes, or raw power to help you catch up or try to get ahead of other players. So players were faced with the decision to spend money on digital items that held no value or save their money and grind those items with time. Now their choices have been modified and expanded. A player can invest money into their progression or appearance that naturally increases the real world value of their character or they can invest nothing but their time into the character but then they still have to choose if they want to invest what they earn back into the character or take those earnings as profit. In my experience, this makes each gameplay session matter much more than if I were playing purely for my own personal enjoyment. This is because after spending thousands of dollars on games and equipment over the years and tens of thousands of hours in those games, I have nothing to show for it but a few unforgotten memories. Most of the games I can't even play any longer because their servers are now shut down. It's a catch-22 because I feel guilty if I don't play these games after spending so much money on them, but if I spend so much time playing the games, I feel guilty about not spending enough time with my family and friends. This means that no matter how hard I try to balance this act, I always end up feeling more like shit about the choice I made as the opportunity cost sinks in and leaves me feeling with regret that would overshadow any enjoyment I would get from either option. With Mirror 4, I never have the feeling I'm wasting my time in the game because of the residual earnings I get from playing, and I never feel like I have to sacrifice time away from my real life due to the AFK system. I think this is the reason reason why so many different types of individuals enjoy this game all across the globe. Speaking of options, if you have friends who are already enjoying the game and you want to skip to their level, you can purchase an NFT character from another player and migrate them to the server your friends are on. This is not a level boost, okay? This was not created out of thin air by the developers to be sold to players with zero world value like in typical games. This is another player's blood, sweat, and tears that can never be reproduced exactly in a million years. It is truly one of a kind, handcrafted, built differently by them for you. Even when you drop the mic, your character will live on in the hands of another player that is using it to earn and pwn long after you retire, but they couldn't have done so without your help. This is also a great option for people who want to skip the PvE aspect and jump right into some hardcore PvP action. Don't even think about trying to purchase the proudest Taoist because it will never be sold, which means the only decision I have to make is which sweet child of mine will deserve to inherit it when I die. Don't worry, you can sort all of the NFTs by class, level, power, and price to narrow down your selection and even go into the inventory of the character to see exactly where their strengths and weaknesses lie and load it into the game once purchased. When you are done playing the game, you can continue to earn with your NFT in Mirage, an NFT management minigame, or resell your NFT to another player. Maybe you want a high level character, but you also want to experience the story of the game from the beginning. Another unique feature of Mirror 4 is that they allow you to play multiple accounts directly from the native launcher. This means that you can load your NFT character on one account and start fresh on a brand new account at the same time, using the autopilot feature when you want to switch between the two. Since the game was released over seven months ago, there has been a steady stream of new content for players to experience at all levels. 
Some of the major updates include the weekly valley capture event. There are three valleys where players can mine dark steel. For one hour each week, any clan can attempt to capture one of these valleys by destroying the monolith in the center and keeping control of it until the end of the event. Whichever clan holds the valley will automatically receive 15% of all dark steel mined from that specific valley, granting all the members of that clan a huge advantage in progression, earnings, or both. Every month, there is a castle siege that takes place for one hour. Up to 300 people can participate from each server where 150 players attempt to defend the castle and up to 150 players attempt to take it over. There are many strategies that can be employed in this event, such as siege weapons and organized PvP combat on a massive scale. After listening to the community feedback and monitoring high-level PvP, a recent round of balance changes was made to each class. You also have the ability to change classes and a fifth class, the Arbalist, was added. In addition, in addition to local markets of each server, there is an exchange that allows players to buy or sell items globally using the currencies earned within the game. Players can even purchase packages directly with crypto instead of cash using HydraPay, making the process of investing your earnings back into your character easier than ever due to a lack of fees. Players are also able to stake their earnings or investments for amazing interest rates. This is not your grandmother's savings bond that you got when you graduated from the 6th grade, okay? This is like if your grandma's savings bond traveled back in time to 1930 and assassinated Hitler entirely preventing the tragedy of World War II while earning compounded interest across multiple timelines. They are not the same. New raids, areas, and bosses have been added such as the Kruken, which require over 400 people to take down on my server, as well as cross-server expeditions where the top clans from each server fight or cooperate to take down powerful bosses for hundreds of chests. New items have been added, including the mystic pieces, secondary weapons, and earrings to further customize your character's build. As with any popular online game, it has been the target of cheaters, exploiters, and hackers who are looking to take advantage of the platform as it is being developed. While no system is perfect in its detection, WeMade has banned over 12 million accounts to date and implemented in-game mechanics and economic protections to fight against them such as Hydra and the Trinity algorithm. As I look back over the years at all the games I have enjoyed in the past, one thing that is clear is that it is not the same. It is enjoyment for the sake of personal entertainment, free from guilt, and it took a game like Mirror 4 to make me realize why I never felt as good as I should have from spending time playing video games in the past. Hope you'll come to the same conclusion. I'd like to thank you for watching either way. Don't forget to like and subscribe so we can do this again sometime.